All right, Internet, welcome to Nerd Explains the World. Um, there's been tons of these videos over the years on YouTube, and times are changing, but, like, humans are laughably predictable. We all do the same stuff. So uh, the theory here is the quantum revolution, and what that means is we can finally have a theory of everything. So we're in this problem right now, and it's called postmodernism. And you gotta understand derivatives and integrals before you understand postmodernism. And to understand derivatives and integrals, you just need to go through calculus BC. Honestly, go through like Calc three. Just like understand, understand math. Like understand it because you need to know derivatives and integrals. So we were everybody was on the same page when we when Christ showed up, and we were all fish, uh, swim fishy swim, and everybody was a good Christian for a while, and then we had all this. The Romans got involved, and then, like, the Persians got involved, and then, like, the Goths got involved, and then, like, the Middle East got involved, and then Muhammad showed up, and then, like, whoa. And then, like, the Hindus have just been chilling from, like, from whenever. So they're just like, bro, what are you guys doing? We're just over here chilling. So a whole bunch of crazy stuff happened in, like, the last 2,000 years. So, like, uh, the Hindus, their religion is the oldest one. It's just, it's survived a really long time, you know? They've just been chilling, you know? They're not like the, the Westerners go crazy and, like, <laughs> they would, like, fight each other, we enslave each other. Like, we do some fucked up things to each other, but we don't got to do that no more because we have this integral revolution. So, postmodernism was the thing after modernism. Modernism was the result of Catholicism, like capitalism, like all these systems, and meshing with religion, and it didn't really work. And then we had the 20th century, and ho! Oh, like Nietzsche predicted it. He said the death of God will cause a bunch of killing. And then we had, well, we had to try different. Yuval Harari calls them intersubjective realities. So we had to try different shared myths out. We tried the Nazism thing. We tried Maoist China. That didn't really go well. Uh, we tried USSR, Soviet, uh, the sickle, and the didn't go well. Lots of killing, lots of death, lots of starvation. Communism did not work. We went capitalistic, and we went Christian, and then... America in the 17, late 1700s became like the modern day promised land. And it was founded on the Bible. America is like, the original constitution is built off of the biblical corpus. So it's the biblical myth, the inner subjective reality of Christianity. Like the God of Abraham, the religion of my ancestors is the religion that America is founded upon and then we mixed it with like uh, capitalism and free markets and that went amazing and it's going so amazing in the backgrounds that uh people got so crazy and so well they were supposed to get crazy because we were kind of oppressive to get here because remember the the christian ethic that got us here was very uh, kill everyone else and be the superior. We had this word dominance hierarchy in our schools for a while, and that needs to be integrated with like cooperation hierarchy. And what that means is we have to integrate the Western knowledge corpus with the Hindu and the Buddhist and the Eastern and like the, all the hemispheres of the world, all the wisdom traditions. This is where the integration part comes in. So we differentiated. So because we have good dataism, dataism is been like our data sciences. It's nice. This is why you should probably be a computer science major in college, honestly, because or math, math, computer science, do those ones. I wouldn't get engineering just because engineers are workers, essentially. I would just do math, computer science. But if you want to go engineering and work, I mean, do it that way. Anyway, that's that's not the point. The point is the theory of everything. And this is where a guy named Ken Wilber... So, you know how in basketball there's, like, goats of different generations? So, like, MJ is a goat. Kobe is a goat. LeBron is a goat. And, like, they kind of... One, then the other, then the other. 
And so thinkers, academics, go like that too. So Nietzsche was the goat, and then Jung in the 60s, 1960s, was the goat. But Sigmund Freud, his uh, mentor, Freud didn't believe in religion, and Freud is... <coughs> this is where it gets bad. This is where America falls apart. The APA, American Psychology Association, goes with Freudian presuppositions. So, ugh, this is where the humanities department devolves from truth, so to speak. We, we go away from the goats, and we go to this sub-thinker, Freud, and it goes really bad. So that's why we have all this nonsense in our humanities departments right now. And it's crazy. People are getting canceled. Like, free speech is a mess. Like, we're really messing with some things in, like, countries like Canada, <laughs> where people are way more... They, they call it progressive, but it's not progressive. It's actually degenerative, but because they haven't understood the presuppositions of their thought, they don't understand how they're destroying the world that they're trying to make better. And this is why you've got to learn how to think. You have to become an epistemologist. Epistemology means learning, learning how to think. So anyway, there's this new goat. His name's Ken Wilber. <coughs> He's better than Jordan Peterson. He's better than Sam Harris. He's better than Dawkins. He's better than a Weinstein or a Anyone who's been on a Joe Rogan podcast does not compete with this person, Ken Wilber, who's alive right now. He wrote amazing work, um, a really simplified version. I'll link it in the description of this video. It's a red book, just like you and you wrote a red book. <coughs> also, Peterson. Peterson wrote a book called Maps of Meaning, which is essentially a very similar book to The Theory of Everything and The Spectrum of Consciousness. But... In a so consciousness evolves and thought evolves, so we're evolving from a postmodern view where we were uh, differentiated all our different truth systems. Like you can put them in an array, and we had like scientific truth, and then we had like um, Buddhist truth, and then we had like Hindu truth, and then we had like Christian truth, and then we had like Islamic truth, and then we had like Zulu truth, and we had like. Um, we had all these, we had Athabascan truths, we had all these different sets of true, and we didn't know how they integrate, how they fit together, but that's the integral revolution. It ties with quantum theory, which is where we go from an atomic view of the universe to a quantum view of the universe, and um, pretty much we realize that, that spectrums and waves are the most fundamental building block of the universe, not atoms. And we're also understanding, because an atom has this little nucleus, and then these electrons float way far away, and there's this all this electromagneticism, these, you know, all these waves, and all these stuff is going on inside an atom. And now we're figuring that out. And then we're figuring out the insides of us. And we're figuring, we're just, it's a big revolution right now. So quantum revolution this is may 14th of 2023 um it pairs really nicely with ken wilbur theory of everything it's a good theory here you go internet D you know like figure it out like honestly we got to figure it out because if we don't figure it out we're gonna destroy each other but we can definitely figure it out because if the world becomes integral then we don't care about tribes the way we do right now. We won't go to war over it because we'll realize we're all one. Like, life force doesn't matter. We're all one. So once we get that unity back, humanity will be chilling, and then we'll go to Mars and we'll do cool stuff, but we can't do all this while we're all, all differentiated. We need to integrate. Integral theory, quantum revolution, theory of everything. Yeah. Under 10 minutes. That's not bad. I described the whole universe. I gave you the whole theory of everything in 9 minutes and 11 seconds.